you uh, protesting today? Then? We're not protesting anything. We're here to support and show show reverence to the people that died in 9-11, the people that died in Benghazi, the people that died in the Boston withdrawal in Kabul Airport, uh, the 13 soldiers that happened over there, and that's what we're here to you know, show our support for them, because it showed they did not die in vain. That's basically it. Uh, so do you, you feel it was a botched withdrawal, like you said, and, and you you wish that uh, people would, what, what would you propose now that the withdrawal is done, what would you, what would you propose as a solution now as to everything that has happened? Well, in past history, when a commander leaves half his troops to get murdered and killed, and leaves all the civilians in place to get murdered and killed, usually, something they, usually they don't say a leader very long. And that's basically what happened. There was no way you pull the troops out before you get the people out. That's ludicrous. Yeah, the um, it is seems a little bit backwards that they did that. It was almost uh, like it's a uh, foreign foreign government would do that. You know, it's not something that uh, somebody would do to their own people, I guess. But uh, with regard to the, it seems a pretty divide uh, in the country, and it seems so backwards. Like I see a bunch of like rainbow flags here, and like you know, all these kind of like oh hate not welcome here, and that tends to be the message of all the people that have been. Yeah, right. And it seems counterintuitive because um, you know the the. The people that aren't supporting the, you know, that don't support the troops, that like have been kind of absent in the face of uh, the Afghanistan uh, war, really. Like nobody really kind of mentions the kind of cultural thing that's happening, like and why you know the divide between the people in Afghanistan and us here, and like, uh, and not not that I'm to say that we should maybe force that on them, but as a result of this uh, in, invasion that we had in 2001, following 9/11, this is the anniversary. Uh, it just seems like it's been counterintuitive uh, to the initial mission which we set up for, which was to protect democracy, Western values, is what, what we were told. And that the people scam. hated our, yeah, they hated our way of life, is what they said. You hate us. It was a total scam. Right. So it just seems like, because now they're like under the guise of like refugees, I and mean, like they brought all these Afghanistan people in without with leaving our Americans behind. It just seems like it's completely. It's just a used as a reason to just kind of make us defenseless to the uh, and absent of any of the uh, substance. You quite well. Yeah. It's a, what, do you have a comment on that? You no. You understand that quite well. Yeah. You really do. <laughs> it's totally wrong. And nothing in this country will ever get straightened out until it's an honest vote. And there's no way possible the vote results that you see all over the country are really true. There's no way possible. I do not believe. That. I've been in too many rallies. I've seen too many groups of people. I've talked to too many people. There's no way our, our elections are honest. Until that happens, we're screwed. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, it seems. That's what we have, that's what we, I believe that's what they have to focus on. You gotta. If you don't have a fair election, everything else is out the day, out, out the window. Because why would they? If they're gonna fix the election, why would they listen to anybody? Well, it just seems consistent with what we've seen over the past supposedly we're defending western values and democracy just seems like that's just uh consistent with what we're actually doing the the, the not robbing ourselves of the election robbing ourselves of the uh because now we're bringing all these refugees who are establishing no-go zones in western countries yeah, like that have yeah country cities in sweden right yeah now they have cities that are completely like uh sharia uh, law control right yeah so it just seems like this election robbery and the, the dem democracy, you know, deterioration is just consistent with what we've seen since 2011. We've kind of, well, been, if you think about it, the only good goal that we have behind it is getting more people to getting people to vote their side to wipe out us, our votes. That's all it is. They, they know there are more and more people to get against them, so they have to get more and more people voters on their side. Illegitimate? No, I'm not. Well, they don't care. Right. Yeah. It's all about the voting and staying in power. Yeah. Yeah, and they're uh, and, and and taking power out of the people, really. Taking power over the people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
It's just like they do in communist countries. You are, you're, I'm sure some of those Vietnamese people over there probably lived under communism in Vietnam. I met people from Ukraine that lived under communism. I know people from Poland, from Russia, and they all tell the same thing. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. Everybody, everybody gets the same, no matter how hard you work. Everybody gets the same, which is basically nothing. And the people that are members of the Communist Party in control get everything. Or, like in the was in ancient Europe, the royal classes get everything, and the peasants get nothing. All the serfs in Russia. It's, it's happened ever and over and over again. The history of the world. Why would it be any different this time? Right. Yeah. I definitely think we're under serious with the COVID stuff and everything that they're uh, orchestrating. It seems like they're using the COVID as a means to completely restructure uh, Western civilization. Really, just like. Uh, well, that's because they cured the common flu. Was that the? They, they cured, cured the flu. There was no flu deaths last year. Right, right. They're only COVID. Yeah, but even with the flu, they never had these kinds of uh, restrictions. restrictions and, no. that, and now it's bankrupting a bunch of like. It's a big scam. Yeah. It's a fucking scam. There's other medicine that will work for it, and nobody's allowed to take it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. It's a way they can get around. It's not a government audit issue. It's a health department audit issue. So therefore, they get a better way to get through it in the courts. The same way that Biden's mandate about the workplaces, that's going to OSHA. So it's an OSHA regulation. It's not a not a law and not an executive order. Because this is the most That's what it all is. Is there anything else you're really concerned with, uh, with uh, the upcoming after the Afghanistan withdrawal, the COVID resurfacing? You know, what, what do you? Anything else you're concerned about? I told you the only thing I'm concerned about is having honest elections. Until that happens, everything will be downhill. You have to have an honest election in a democracy. If you have no honesty in the election, nobody's going to believe it. Both sides are going to be mad at each other and there can never be any consensus or unity. Alright, I'm here with uh, Mark Zahedi and Samson Rachapi of, uh, of Super Happy Fun America. Uh, guys, you ordered to uh, organize this um, gathering here today to protest the botched withdrawal of the troops in Afghanistan and I know you're both veterans. I've spoken with you before um, obviously, it hurts to kind of see how we've left the uh, mission in, the, in that regard. And I was just spo uh, speaking with uh, one of the attendants of the rally here today about the, um, the nature of the mission and how it seems like we never really we lost track of that and we never really served and in that regard we were never really on board with that especially given how we've seen they've brought the uh, refugees back the refugees um, and left Americans behind and you know all that stuff so I just wanted to get get a comment as as ref as a uh, veterans about you know the culture we're, we've seen now imported into Europe as under the guise of our occupation that was supposedly there to promote Western values protect democracy from people who hate us and now we have George Bush one of the people who launched the whole thing uh, saying that we have domestic extremists uh, it just seems like everything's all upside down world and now we have got people across the street protesting you guys but let's just I just wanted to get a general General gist of any comments when who wants to take that one there. All right. Yeah. Uh, I agree with a lot of what you said. Uh, I'm actually a veteran of the Afghanistan war. We're not here today um, to take an opinion on whether we should have stayed or left. Uh, you know, for instance, I agree that it was time to leave, but there's probably people here that think we should stay, but it's atrocious that uh, Biden totally watched the withdrawal. Uh, we, you know, you can look at the specific um, strategy he implemented where he we, ab we abandoned, uh, you know, one airport and went to another airport that wasn't secure. Uh, it's atrocious that Americans were left behind and so we're really upset about that you know as, as a nation we've always said that we never leave anyone behind and what do we do we left people behind and totally the uh, 13 service members uh, it was totally unnecessary that died during the botch withdrawal like we're still looking at it and people are wondering why were they so exposed um, you know as as we ran security operations for 20 years we knew we knew better and it just seems horrible that uh, they they needlessly died they we appreciate the sacrifice they made for our nation uh, 
Uh, but I think Biden's to blame. Uh, he's the man at the top, so he takes full responsibility. Okay. And then uh, either you have a comment about the uh, just the mission overall and how we, we've kind of seemed to lose track of that? Well, I mean, 20 years ago, uh, the day of those terrible attacks and then the subsequent weeks, months, and years later, we were told that the reason why we needed to go to these overseas countries was to fight to preserve our freedoms, um, our constitution, our rights, our wealth, our treasure. And now, 20 years later, if you look back and reflect on all, like the state of our country now, we're more in debt. We've spent thousands of lives in these foreign countries. We're completely divided. Our rights are disappearing more and more, just literally by the day here. And I can't help but look back over these 20 years and say, was any of this worthwhile? Did we succeed in any of our stated goals when we went to these foreign countries? And I can't help but say no. And some of, like there are so many veterans in this crowd here today, and it's amazing to think about that these people met this country's call to go and fight in these overseas wars, and now today we're the ones who are being labeled and treated like domestic terrorists. I, I can't, I'm just absolutely disgusted when I think about it, and I can't, I shudder to think about what my two year old daughter is going to be dealing with 20 years from now, considering the type of environment we're in here today. Yeah, along the lines of what Sam was saying too, uh, you know, after the, over the past 20 years or even before the United States, we have become more centralized government. Uh, we built a deep state and a military industrial complex and Biden is actually making extreme comp uh, comments right now. He's labeling people just because they didn't get a vaccine as basically enemies of the state. So I think a lot of us are worried, are they going to turn that military industrial complex that they've been building over decades and now turn it against American citizens? And that's part of the reason why we're here. You know, we're going to stand up for our nation. We're going to fight for our nation and we're not going to let it slide into Marxism. So we're going to keep coming out. Thank you very much. Um, I was also uh, speaking with uh, a gentleman over there just about um, how it seems like upside down that all these people all of a sudden now like uh, people are aware about the kind of culture in Afghanistan but they don't understand that the uh, the media doesn't cover the uh, the no-go zones it's all throughout Europe of you know the people that they brought in and are, aren't integrating they're just you know they're they're maintaining their essentially parallel civilization in while also undermining our own so um, there's that and then they just seem to let, lack any uh, understanding and do, who, do, who would you blame that for like the because all you see all these rainbow flags everybody like in the churches they say oh peace and that and then well you know there's ideologies everybody wants peace but you know you can't you have to you have to work towards it you have to like understand what 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 peace means and uh, it just seems like everybody's just it's like uh, icing on the shit cake as I like to say I know just there's a lot of naivete going on, especially with the youth these days. And I, they don't know what it means to sacrifice. They don't listen to the to the old people like the Vietnamese veterans over there who spent a dozen years in a POW camp suffering um, be, just because he was fighting, fighting against communism. And people don't want to look at what's going on today and, and realize that this is a, a Marxist fight. And so when they preach equality and they say, we need to open our doors for these refugees who are coming from these uh, impoverished war zones and try to give them a better place, you're right, they don't assimilate. They don't want to say that there's an American culture and that the culture is in a way superior to the place that I came from. They want to come here and change the culture here to accommodate their backwards ways, which means, you know, I, I'm not gay. I'm not going to care if somebody else is gay. But you go to some of these other countries, they will bring you up to the rooftop and throw you off the side of it because you are attracted to the same sex as somebody else. And I don't think that that's right, but that's the type of culture that we're importing here when we have open doors and unchecked policies where, where we don't even know who they are and we're welcoming them into our country. It's sick and it's going to have bad consequences uh, a year from now, five years from now. Who knows, it might even be sooner than that. But we will have ill consequences for here and for Europe if we continue these backwards policies. 
Yeah, exactly what he said. Uh, you know, there's no point of fighting terrorism overseas and then leave our borders wide open for terrorists to walk right in. So, uh, you know, it's a, basically a globalist agenda, and we're, we're stopping it. You know, we're not, Marxism is not welcome in this nation. And he said, who's to blame? It's the media, for one, and we've ceded control of all our major institutions, from education to government, um, to even the military now, you see with all this, these woke generals, we've ceded that to the Marxists, and we gotta start taking it back inch by inch, and no one's gonna get take your freedom, no one's gonna defend your freedom but you. So Americans really need to learn that, that if we don't stand up for our freedom now, it'll be too late. Um, speaking of uh, taking over the institutions that you mentioned, um, I know because I, like I said, George Bush, I saw a comment that he made about like domestic extremists, how they're infesting our children or whatever. And it's like they obviously they're referring to the people who, such as yourselves, who are talking about uh, the Bosch withdrawal and everything and criticizing the Republican Party really because. Uh, it really have like kind of almost been taken over like you were saying and Lindsey Graham who thinks we're gonna reinvade Afghanistan and it seems like a little bit tone deaf as if like we're gonna fight the war over there and we're literally like to defend ourselves here and like we're literally uh, look at the COVID like we uh, there's no we're completely uh, under assault in the homeland and we're talking about reinvading a country overseas thousands of miles away for some reason and so like you're saying like the borders what, what, what do you think uh, is the future of the Republican Party because it seems as though like especially after uh, the past election where everybody just seemed to roll over for the uh, established uh, agenda which was Biden's agenda just what do you where do you see this going I know, what the, yeah. I know exactly what the future uh, of the Republican Party is there's two choices it's either they accept the Trump wing and the populists because we've taken over the party and we're taking it over at local level or the Republican Party dies and a new party rises. But yeah, all these rhinos and all these establishment types, they're just as bad as the Democrats. So they need to go too. The future of the Republican Party depends on their decisions. And, you know, I don't see any major Republican Party candidates or leadership here today. And they they ignore the movements that are going on in their own states. And so I agree. Either they're going to figure it out and they're going to survive and they're going to run candidates or we're going to take them head on. I personally don't care about the Republican Party at this point. I want to see candidates run. I want them to be value driven. And, I, and if the Republican Party in the state doesn't want to work with us, then I think we should run candidates to go directly against them. Run them in the primaries, win these primaries, and go all the way to November and potentially take these seats away from the rhinos. And if not, I, I think that I would rather have a far left communist Democrat holding these rhino seats because at least we know what their agenda is. Instead of going out and supporting these rhino candidates, thinking they're going to represent my interests in the state house and have them turn around and go sign on to things like the, the Roe Act, which allows up to day of abortions, yeah. things like that. Uh, my, my Republican can, uh, my re Republican representative signed that bill. He's not a Republican, he's a rhino, and we should be taking these people on head on. Exactly what he said. This is the real Republican Party right here. This is it. These, these are the activists, like not the establishment. So they're either going to have to let us in because you know they're going to have to accept that we're nationalists, we're anti-globalists, we we support tradition, uh, traditional American values. That's us. You know we don't all agree on everything, but that's us, and we support liberty and freedom. So that's either that's the Republican Party or it just doesn't need to exist. Um, so a lot of the speculation is that they're this whole the COVID stuff is they, they they're looking for to seize power and in, in a way to uh, deal with the like uh, Klaus Schwab and all the globalist types are all talking about these challenges we're facing with as like a global population obviously things are pretty unstable throughout the world as, as we've uh, grown uh, do you how do you uh, see us taking on challenges obviously they're 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 kind of using these these borders and I do I not that I don't uh, agree with Klaus Schwab or but I do think that there are obviously challenges with our as we've seen with our culture clashes as with Afghanistan uh, which can be demonstrated with our conflict in Afghanistan but just how how would you guys uh, 
propose just using my liberty as a as a kind of beacon and like because I also see what I've also been disappointed with personally with the Republican Party is they kind of just just uh, dismiss any environmental co concerns people have as kind of uh, just like you know something to just gloss over and like not real when obviously there are true environmental costs not necessarily as as how they portray them but there you know there are there are things we could we could work towards and what do you think the obstacles in our systems as they exist today uh, are do, do you think do you think the liberty is the solution allowing people the less taxes and what, what, what would you both of you uh, the more I learn about the judicial system as I study law the, the less faith I have in a judicial branch I'm taking a national security class right now and the like we have a statutory system but we also have a common law system so they write statutes and then these precedents come out and we're in a state right now in this country where it's precedents after precedents after precedents that allow the government to get away with literal murder um, I remember a case that we were just reading about we grabbed a German citizen who was like Lebanese descent or something we threw him in one of these CIA dark camps and we tortured him and he was petitioning for um, uh, due process and for a long time our government didn't afford him due process and it ended up going to the Supreme Court. The, sur the Supreme Court ordered him to have some due process, but it turns out that that amount of due process that we get afforded if we're caught fighting in a war zone is very little. And if all that they have to do is declare a state of emergency and a whole bunch of these constitutional rights and checks and balances get suspended. And I, you know, the writ of habeas corpus, all that Congress has to do is say habeas corpus is done for now because of a ex exigency like COVID or like domestic terrorism, they could take us, throw us in jail, and we don't ever have to see a judge as long as that emergency is in, is in effect. And with rhinos like Lindsey Graham and, I mean, all these other ones that you've named, the governors who roll over and just die at any sort of threat of COVID and this extremist Democrat president that we have, I could very well see a future where they suspend habeas corpus, they put their little microscope on people like me and him, and then off we go to whatever camp, nobody hears from us again. What is the solution? I don't know what the solution is. I wish I knew what the solution was because I'd be working on it. This is the only thing that I'm aware of that we can do right now. Um, what else am I missing? You said something else. I just, yeah, just dealing with uh, the challenges of as we grow, uh, become more interdependent and the environmental challenges. Oh, environmental. I think a lot of the environmental we issues we have are probably uh, the, the solution that our government has is to throw trillions of dollars at the problem and we've seen what the government does with these this money that we trust them with they invest in failed companies like Solyndra they uh, enrich their billionaire buddies who manage these corporations and the problem I mean look at Afghanistan 20 years later the problem isn't solved we leave in disgrace and the problems are worse we're all that much uh, broker as a result and we're further divided I know the answer is not the government. That's all that I can say. Yeah, I don't want to see rivers and streams polluted. I don't want to see factories belching stuff into the sky unchecked. But I know that taxing Americans to the tune of trillions of dollars, transferring wealth from one class of people to another class of people is not the answer. I, I, I don't really have much to add to that. That was very good and a lot. Uh, one thing you did mention, though, was uh, COVID and the vaccines. So we all have autonomy over our own bodies. So the president can get up there and say he's going to mandate vaccines. I know that's how we change the language. Uh, he's saying we're, we're going to force you, but not mandate or whatever he's going to use. Whatever word he's going to use, we're not going to do it. Like, I have autonomy over my own body. I'm not going to submit to their experimental vaccine. And I bet if you ask a lot of the people in the crowd, they haven't got the vaccine. I haven't got it. I'm not going to get it. So there's nothing you can do. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, like one of the stated like main purposes of government is to protect the people's uh, ability to conduct commerce, which is like now that they're kind of saying that you can't get a job in the government uh, or if you have a, more than 100 employees, you can't, uh, you have to be vaccinated or all those types of things. It just seems completely uh, 
everything's just gone upside down, doesn't the whole government just seems operating uh, counter to its established purpose. It's a medical dictatorship. They're using COVID as an excuse uh, to, to basically impose all these rules upon us. And it's definitely not going to stop there. You know, it's not going to be get one vaccine and then we've already seen now get one booster. You know, what else is going to do? It's going to be tied to your driver's license. Uh, we're all going to have to have our biometric data with the government. It's going to get really bad if we don't stop it right now. Yeah, I've, I was wondering this because I do see a lot of like the problems as far as like, but like you were saying, they all seem kind of manufactured by their own uh, established uh, attempts to like, maintain power and suck suck money out of people or whatever. Uh, particularly with Afghanistan, like we we we're supposedly there to go fix it, and like with the environment, like oh yeah, we're gonna fix the environment, but like everything they do with their attempts to control everything is only making the environment worse. It's almost like let's just take a step back and like w w look at where what what's causing everybody to live in a certain way like what's impeding people from competing and coming up with better alternatives and it just seems like everything's just there to uh, protect the established power rather as opposed to like go with better solutions but I don't know if you either of you had anything to add with that no yeah, I actually I agree with that yeah, yeah yeah same here I think that we're yeah. we're suffering from uh, a two decade long conspiracy and and we're seeing it play out right now the precedents that we're set after 9-11 have led to the stuff that's that we're dealing with today with COVID-19 and you know you mentioned the environment I have a my national security professor is a very well known he wrote the constitutional book that we studied and students across this country study this constitutional book that my professor that I happen to have wrote and he's been telling us that the environment is a national security threat and so if they could justify putting people in camps because of World War II with the Japanese inter inter internment camps. They could justify putting substances into our bodies because of a COVID-19 emergency. What kind of crazy stuff do you think they're going to justify because of this existential threat from the environment that's going to create a national security threat? If these precedents are being built on other precedents and they're going to lead to a huge crackdown on our rights from the government someday. And we're seeing it play out right now, right here in the street. We'll have a little reflection on how this all went for us. We'll have a little sharing circle and then we'll, you know, collect these signs and I think we'll do something artistic with them as we move forward as well. So we'll have some momentum. We'll be making our own stand up when we go right. Just wanted to get your take on what what you were were you kind of protesting their agenda here today or yeah yeah we were inspired to come out to um, counter hate with love you know it's like Martin Luther King said only hate only love can overcome hate and so we're not going to stand by and just let the hate speech be there we're going to come out and give our vision for what we want our society to be like and what we want our community to be like and that's an important thing because you know hate speech has its own ripples its negative ripples but I feel like we counteracted that with some of the positivity out yeah I you got a young crowd here and it seems like everybody's really nice um, 
what specifically did you uh, hate? Did you want a message that you wanted, hoping to uh, dismiss? And other than just promoting, like uh, we know about the group, um, super happy fun America. I think we know that they stand for white nationalism, homophobia, and um, etc. Anti-Semitism. So we're out here talking about all people being deserving of love all people being included in our society and having a society based on love rather than hate and we just don't want to let that hatred grow so we're out here so um one of the uh it was i guess it, their protest was uh this today you're right super happy fun america was uh n the 9 11 uh bosch withdrawals what they said and a lot of it is what the, i was when i was talking to them what their concerns were was not so much because i saw a lot of rainbow flags here yeah. with you guys and it wasn't so much that they were hating the rainbow people it was more like they were d uh upset how that the uh, agenda as with uh because i talked with one of the organizers yeah. and he said that um the afghanistan you know as we know the situation in afghanistan uh, they kind of like you know don't really agree with anything whatsoever with women or like uh the rainbow that, that agenda long that group has a long track record of hate on numerous fronts but it's a slippery game that they play on the alt-right to try to hide what they're about. This latest incident with uh, Afghanistan, everyone's looking at it to try to see what could have been done better. It's not an excuse for hate, and uh, it's not cover for their agenda. We're not gonna be that naive, come on. So you would, you would say though that there is, because uh, they, they highlighted some of their concerns about um, the refugees that were being uh, brought over from Afghanistan, yes. who, um, and it's not just Afghanistan, but people who have been brought to Europe from the conflicts in, uh, various conflicts in Iraq and the Middle East, yes. um, that we've, you know, Syria and all that stuff, and they've been relocated, and their concerns are that they're actually uh, going, you know, all these people who are settling aren't really assimilating, and they're actually not really, they're undermining the actual... Anti-immigrant so, message? Well, not necessarily anti-immigrant, but anti-non-assimilation, and they want to protect, essentially, what the, from what I understand and what they told me, was that they wanted to protect the people who have, who, like, uh, who, who want to protect right. people okay. who have, like, gay okay. people or... This is, th this is, this is some of the camouflage of the alt-right, and they're twisting and turning of the rhetoric when in reality they're white nationalists and they have a xenophobic perspective and they're bringing that to this issue and now they're trying to say that they're not anti-gay come on they are and they have to express that numerous times they have a straight pride flag they have a straight yeah. pride flag that stands for <laughs> homophobic agenda so well what i can say that their frustration i, I just was because i was just speaking about the 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 uh well, hold on though because we have to finish our event but thank you who are you with uh citizens dawn who's that it's like an independent uh organization all right so let's all um gather around i think we set it up We're okay yeah, just a quick one. Sue, I just wanted to, uh, I'm with, here with Sue Eani, the uh, one of the organizers of the uh, bus withdrawal, uh, protest of the bus withdrawal that... Uh, the bus withdrawal from Afghanistan by fake President Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, yeah. He shouldn't be in office, obviously. I mean, he, look at the mess he's making. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty messy, I have to say. Uh, but I, I was just, uh, I spoke with some of your uh, fellow organizers and they were telling me about the, the message you guys had for in particular today, but I went and spoke with the counter protesters across the street who uh, had uh, rainbow flags and they were, their message essentially was no hate and everything like hate not welcome here. Do you see any hate? We're the most loving group around. Uh, the hate is coming from their side. You know, we, 
we don't not accept them. We we have no problem with LGBT people. We're, they're members of our group. We're, we're not racist. They call us racist. I think it's pretty hateful to lie about us. They call us terrible names like white supremacists. We're, every race is represented here. So, and they're all patriots. They're just proud to be American and uh, they love this country and they don't want to see it uh, turn into Venezuela, basically. So, and we're fighting tyranny, so that doesn't happen. Um, well, they did uh, reference the straight pride flag as uh, a means of hate, and I noticed you're brandishing the I'm straight pride. The straight pride flag, which also stands for um, traditional values, because we have two wedding rings and the male, male, female, Greek, ancient Greek symbols. Okay, thank you. Take care. Bye. <laughs> um, and we see nothing wrong with with having a straight pride flag. If you know they can have their LGBT pride flag, and we have no problem with that, they would not add an S on the end to end of LGBTQ for straight, which would have been more inclusive and more tolerant. But they refused. So here we are. We're representing the straight majority, the, the oppressed majority in America, straight people. <laughs> you go ahead if you want to mention something. I can cut out if, in, the, in the editing. And... I don't know. I have gay family members, so I don't know what they're talking about. They can take the homophobic comments and do whatever they want. You want to? They want to know about a restaurant? Yes. You want, you want yeah. To uh, we have to go because the cops are taking us out. Oh, all right. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that 9-11 isn't, uh, I mean, yes, it's about the horrible terrorist attack that happened on 9-11-2001, but let's uh, also remember all the heroes who lost their lives um, in the wars that followed, and also uh, all those victims who um, are suffering and died from cancer and other terrible diseases because of the terrorist attacks. And I also want to remind everybody about 9-11-2012 when the Obama-Biden administration uh, left 40 Amer about 36 to 40 Americans behind um, the first time that we know of. Uh, they left them behind to die like dogs in the desert, and the Libyans rescued them, thank God, in Benghazi. Um, so this situation of leaving Americans behind is not unprecedented. They were going to leave uh, all those Americans behind last time. They just figured, oh, they're CIA personnel. We can bury it in some top secret file. They're terrible, terrible people. That's why we need to bring uh, some real leadership back to America and hopefully get our country back.